to underline our pioneers, Frank is only one choice. The original, the greatest. I give you the Ferrari F40. Oh, haven't done one of these for a while. Introduced in 1987, the F40 was the final car to be overseen by the big man himself, Enzo Ferrari, who was, above all else, a man of ambition. You see, the race to 200 miles an hour for a road legal car in the 80s was a bit like the space race in the 60s. Massive budgets, genius engineers, all to be the first to make that claim. And the F40 was the first road car to get there. This is the Apollo 11 of supercars. This is the giant leap for car kind. But the real genius behind the F40 is that in building his rocket ship, Enzo kept things beautifully simple. Ferrari could have gone down a technology route, but instead it just made a very light tubular steel chassis, added some Kevlar bodywork, and then added a huge amount of power, 478 horsepower from a twin turbocharged V8. It's just a massive go-kart. It's immediate. There's no power assistance to anything. The pedals take a massive push. The steering takes a heave. The gear shift, well, you have to nudge it from your shoulder. It's just brutal, but sublime. This isn't just the greatest 200 mile an hour car. This is the greatest road car ever. For me, there's no debate. No debate. It's the greatest. It's a good effort, but wrong. If you want the classic 200 mile an hour supercar, everyone knows you gotta buy a British, or at least borrow British. I give you the Jaguar XJ220. Oh my word! It doesn't get much better than this. The mightiest road going Jag ever made first landed as a concept in 1988, and it was spectacular. I remember seeing this car for the first time as a kid. I'd have been like 11, 12 years of age. It just looked like something I'd never seen before. And now here I am, driving one. The first thing you need to know about the 220, though, is that to a lot of people, it's considered a bit of a failure. And that's because Jaguar, they promised a V12, they promised scissor doors, they promised four-wheel drive. But when they came to make it, they discovered that all that was, well, a bit complicated and a bit expensive. So it ended up two-wheel drive normal doors and the engine from a V6 Metro. But disappointing though that may sound, the XJ220 still had a top speed of 217 miles an hour. Compared to the F40, it was in another league. I think that is genius. I think that is the best of British ingenuity. We'll make do with what we've got. Stick it in there. It still goes 217 mile an hour. That is not a failure. And besides, just have a look at it. Just look at it. Don't be fooled by that face though. Underneath, it's a wild animal. <laughs> Strange thing 
about this car is you're driving it and nothing's happening. Nothing. And then all at once, the turbo's kicking. It's like a Tarantino movie. Everything just happens. Oh my word. I'm tense. I'm tense. What is the. Good morning, Chris. What are you in, Fred? XJ220. Congratulations, that is you in car form. Big British, not as fast as claimed. Chris, it did 217 miles per hour, this car. You can't have a go at it. Well, they called it the XJ220 and it only did 217. They called it Ferrari, the 812 super fast. It doesn't go 812 miles per hour, but it's super fast. <laughs> 